Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Convocation. I'm Joan Lorden, and you'll be hearing from me later, along with Dr. Joel Averin, our faculty president, Celeste Corpening, our staff council chair, and Talia Sampson, our student body president. But now, to mark the beginning of the academic year, I am honored and delighted to introduce UNC Charlotte's fifth chancellor, Dr. Sharon Gaber. Good morning, colleagues. I'm Sharon Gaber. I'm beyond excited to be your new chancellor. Based on what I've been told about the long-standing tradition of university convocation here at UNC Charlotte, I want to start off by stating the obvious, that this convocation program is going to be much different than in past years. Of course, it's 2020, so pretty much everything is different than usual these days. We will also still have a live but virtual general faculty meeting on August 20th, which will provide you with an opportunity to ask questions in real time. As always, this Q&A is open to all faculty as well as staff. I look forward to connecting with you then in a more interactive format. In addition, the newly hired and newly promoted faculty who are normally acknowledged during the university convocation ceremony will be recognized and celebrated during a separate event. For now, let me just say what an extraordinary honor it is to have been selected to lead this amazing institution. What a sobering responsibility to be doing so in the midst of the most challenging circumstances in our lifetimes. Less than a month ago, I arrived on this beautiful campus full of excitement and enthusiasm. UNC Charlotte has an excellent reputation, not only here in North Carolina, but around the country. And on top of that, we're uniquely positioned in a world-class city with so much to offer. So as I walked across campus on that first day, the thought that kept running through my mind was what an amazing opportunity. I feel so fortunate to be a part of continuing the upward trajectory that UNC Charlotte has enjoyed for many years. My academic journey began several years ago as a faculty member at the University of Nebraska, where I worked my way up from assistant professor to department chair and endowed professor. From there, I moved up to interim provost at Auburn University, to provost at the University of Arkansas, and most recently to university president at the University of Toledo. And now, given my background as an urban planner, here I am with my dream job of being the chancellor of UNC Charlotte. I've always loved being a faculty member, and I'm proud to be counted among the ranks of the outstanding faculty who make this institution so great. Today we face an unprecedented set of challenges, but even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, I want you to be encouraged. Our faculty and staff are dedicated and innovative. Our students are creative and resilient. Our university is strong and our future is bright. We will get through this together. Over the past few months, I have been in close contact with Chancellor Emeritus Phil Dubois and members of the Chancellor's Cabinet. So I've been briefed continuously on activities and decisions during the transition. Much work has gone on behind the scenes and that work continues. I know many of our faculty have spent countless hours making preparations that will allow us to deliver classes in creative new ways. On behalf of the students we serve, thank you. And I hope you'll join me as well in giving a heartfelt thank you to the crews of essential employees who have worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic to ensure a safe return to campus. UNC Charlotte is better prepared than most universities to continue delivering a rich learning environment for our students while ensuring we follow appropriate public health guidelines, and exercise care for our campus community. There's no doubt the upcoming academic year will look quite a bit different than in past years, but rest assured that as decisions are being made about how we will operate 
how we will deliver classes, and how we will practice enhanced sanitation procedures, we remain ever mindful of the health and well-being of our campus community. It's the responsibility of all of us to do everything we can to keep each other safe and healthy. You've probably already seen some of the educational materials being displayed around campus, which help clarify the community expectations of our new norm, including wearing face coverings, observing appropriate physical distancing, washing our hands, and sanitizing surfaces. These are things that we all can and must do in order to protect the health of all members of Niner Nation. Just like we are asking our students to do, I encourage you to join me in taking the Niners Pledge, which I recently committed to in a video that was shared with the campus community. The pledge states, being a member of Niner Nation means that each of us must take extraordinary steps to stay well and persistently protect each other on campus and in the community. Acknowledging we will only be successful together, I pledge to take responsibility for my own health, help to protect the health of other Niners, and to help keep Niner Nation safe from the spread of COVID-19 on and off campus. As I begin my time here at UNC Charlotte, I also pledge to you that I will do everything in my power to lead responsibly through these uncertain times, to support and strengthen our academic enterprise, to ensure a great college experience for our students, and to always place the highest priority on the safety and well being of our students, faculty, and staff. I'm also committed to evaluating our systems, policies, and practices to ensure that our university is fostering an inclusive environment that is free from systemic racist barriers. Many of you have already asked about my vision for UNC Charlotte. We're in a great place, and I want to continue to enhance this university in all quality metrics including a push toward becoming a Research One University. But first, I plan to spend the majority of my time over the next several weeks and months doing a whole lot of listening. I want to hear from our faculty, staff, students, alumni, donors, and community partners. I want to hear your thoughts about the university's strengths and about our greatest opportunities. I want to know what you believe differentiates UNC Charlotte from other universities. And most of all, I want to know what makes UNC Charlotte special to you. I look forward to having the opportunity to meet with you and to get to know you as we support one another and work together to continue to move this great university forward. I truly believe our best days are yet to come and I'm honored to stand with you as a fellow Niner. Be safe, be healthy, and let's make it a great year. It's said that we live in extraordinary times. Now, underrepresented minorities like me live through extraordinary times already. So I'm like, what's the big deal? For example, this fall, all we absent-minded professors and thousands of 18 to 22 year olds need to do is follow certain health protocols as rigorously as medical professionals do. Piece of cake, right? Then again, what we've already been through demonstrates that we are tough, resilient, capable, and most of all, adaptable. Being ready for anything is one of Provost Lorden's stated goals for this year, and nobody's better equipped for that than us. We look forward to working with Provost Lorden in this regard and on other agenda goals. And in response to recent events, we're forming a Faculty Equity and Social Justice Task Force to coordinate with enhanced campus and system-wide initiatives. We'll look at history, institutional practices, and we'll make sure we keep the conversation going. Finally, we need to help get the word out that we are a highly engaged and capable institution. 
we participate in research that is vitally relevant to the region and the nation, and in our students, we develop vitally relevant skill sets alongside thoughtful citizenship. We are essential to the well-being of the people we serve, and we should commit to making sure that all the people know it. Thank you. Greetings from Staff Council. I am Celeste Corpening and the current Chair of Staff Council. Our main goal is to assist in creating a harmonious work environment here at UNC Charlotte. Our website, staff.org.uncc.edu, tells a little bit more about us, along with the links for scholarship submissions, how to report an issue, nominate a fellow employee for a Golden Nugget Award, and a new link with discounts offered to UNC Charlotte employees. During these uncertain times, the staff has continued to excel and support the student population, faculty, and other staff members. Staff Council wants to thank everyone for their efforts to make UNC Charlotte an exceptional school with a memorable experience. Special kudos goes out to Dining Services, Facilities Management, Housekeeping, Housing and Residence Life, Human Resources, One IT, Parking, Student Affairs Leadership and Community Engagement, as well as the members of the IMT Planning Committee. Thank you and go Niners! My name is Talia Sampson. I am a junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, majoring in political science and minoring in legal studies. I am honored to serve as this year's student body president. The start of this academic year is unlike any other. However, the SGA is committed to working with you to ensure our students succeed academically, socially, and personally during these extraordinary times. Some initiatives the SGA will embark on this year include creating a Secretary of Wellness position to focus on the mental, physical, and emotional health of students, working with Niner Media to create a podcast to keep students updated on campus news, and creating a safe space on the SGA website for students to voice questions and concerns. SGA is also committed to ensuring our campus is inclusive. UNC Charlotte is a diverse community and we want to make sure all students feel seen and appreciated when they step foot on campus. Again, we look forward to working with all of you to accomplish these goals and to provide our students with an experience they will never forget. Thank you, Go Niners! There are many stories about our founder, Bonnie Cohn. One that I've always liked is a story about a conversation that took place between Miss Bonnie and William Styron. This was before she founded a university and before he was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. As the story goes, Styron wanted to be a writer and was grumbling about having to take Miss Bonnie's math class. Miss Bonnie said to him, we are in a terrible war and before it is over, it is likely that you will be drafted and sent to fight. You will need mathematics if you are to return safely and become the author you aspire to be. What I like about the story is, of course, Miss Bonnie's unfailing belief in the importance of education, especially mathematics, and the fact that in the midst of World War II, she had her eye on the future and saw education as a path to the future. Miss Bonnie's vision is built into the fabric of this university, and we can still draw inspiration from it. There's no question that the past 18 months have challenged and changed this institution. Starting with the murder of Reed and Riley, and now with the pandemic, this has been a difficult time. Both the pandemic and the killing of George Floyd have exposed the inequities in American life and with it, the pain of our black community. As we start a new academic year, we can't ignore what's transpired or where we are. We have work to do. What we do and how we do it is important to the future of our students and the community. We were built to provide access and opportunity. We must continue to embrace that mission. As a university, it's our role to bring science, reason, and perspective to the issues of our time, and to prepare our students as best we can to succeed in the complex environment that they will navigate upon graduation. The world needs their talent. So let's talk briefly about some of the things we need to do. First, the obvious one is to prepare for the continuity of instruction and research in the face of the pandemic. 
Second, I'm also asking the Faculty Council to join me in doing an equity audit to review, and where needed, revise the policies and practices that guide our programs to ensure that we're organized to promote the success of our students and faculty. Third, let's create a unifying co-curricular experience across the institution that addresses the important issues of our time, including racism. Think of it as the common reading on steroids. Fourth, the university system has paused the new program process, and it's time for the biennial program review. Let's use this time to ask what programs we need and what programs need change either because we have new audiences to serve, new problems to address, or have gained new expertise. Finally, our general education curriculum has been in place with relatively little revision for nearly 20 years. Our student body, our programs, the world have undergone significant change since the last major revision. We need to revisit the goals and values embodied in the general education program and ask what a contemporary program should be when students increasingly get their gen ed credit elsewhere. These are not short term projects and we still have a long to do list yet to be completed under conditions we have not faced before. But I'm confident that we will get the job done. I've been amazed by and will always be grateful for the work that our faculty did in the spring to transform their teaching and the work that they continue to do all summer to prepare for this fall. The university staff have worked nonstop to prepare and adjust. So this year, as we welcome new students, new faculty and staff, new deans, and our new chancellor, let's resolve to confront our challenges with our usual creativity and resolve, but also with compassion and the conviction that we're building an institution for the future. And in case you're wondering, I don't know if Styron ever passed math, but he did have to take physics three times. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to join us on Zoom on Thursday, August 20th at 10 a.m. for the general faculty meeting. All faculty and staff are invited to attend this important meeting. Thank you.